Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again with another stock pick of the day video. It is February 4th. Today we're going to take a look at one out of the financial sector, Ally. This is a bank. Let's jump right in. And if you are new to the channel or you just have not done so, if you could hit that thumbs up button down below if you find any value in the content. Hit that subscribe button. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the Vested Interest community and hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Ally Bank. It is my bank. What bank do you use if you don't use Ally? Is it in your portfolio? Is it one you're watching or avoiding altogether? Doing that really does help a small YouTube channel like mine with the YouTube algorithm, and I really appreciate everyone who has taken the time to do so. Thank you so very much. Now, this is the vested interest stock screener. This is how I look at a company on a high level to see if I'm interested in investing. It is also how I set up the stock pick of the day video. So we're going to run through this criteria on this one, including price to book, which I don't usually include. But since we are looking at a bank, I did throw it in this week. You can pause this and go through it. Now, don't just blindly copy uh, my investing criteria. This is not all that I use. I do do some other deep dives into the financials once they pass this metric this is just a screener to see if i'm interested in the company at all and then it goes into my watch list and i do more of a deep dive on it so again use your own criteria we all have our own investing criteria our own investing timeline our own investing goals so make sure your criteria aligns with those now back to Ally. If you want to know more about this company, check them out at www.ally.com. That's www.ally.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this information from. We're in the business of putting people first, and we've been doing just that for over 100 years. Our mission isn't performance either. We show up for our customers when it comes to their financial needs. So Ally used to be tied with GM Financial, and then they spun off Ally. They've, again, been around for 100 years, so they've been in banking you know, long before I was born, uh, and I don't think they're going any anywhere. They are an online bank now, so they do not have any banking locations you can go to it is strictly online and and that's what they offer right they offer auto loans banking so that's personally i have my savings my checking my two daughters custodial accounts as well as my investing portfolio in their bank uh, corporate finance credit cards dealer services so if you're looking for you know a car <laughs> so part of the uh, part of the auto uh, manufacturing that's their big bread and butter is auto financing home financing investing like i said i use their investing app for my investing and lending for your other loan needs again www.ally.com typical bank here let's keep going now, the reason we we're taking a look at them, down 1.23% on the day. It looks like they're down a little bit in the after hours. Closed out the day at, at the close of business at $36.87. Again, it looks like they're further down at $36.51 in the, in the after hours here. We are talking about Ally Financial, ticker A-L-L-Y, out of the financial sector. 52-week range, as low as $21.58, as high as $38.03. They are at $36.87, so definitely closer to their 52-week range here. Average volume 4.3 million. Today's was 3.3. So you can see that sell off throughout the day. Looks like they actually were down below $36 for a little bit. Tried to recover, but overall sell off throughout the day. Market cap of 11.20 billion. Price to earnings ratio. I'm sorry, beta. We'll start there first. Beta is the volatility of their over the overall stock market. They're sitting at 1.38. One being the market, anything over being more volatile, which this company is, anything under one being less volatile. Price to earnings ratio, PE ratio is at $12.33 per share. Now, PE for banks is not a good one to look at. You should really look at price to book. So we did add that. If you go down here to price to book, for price to book, for banks, you use one. One being fair value, anything under one being undervalued, anything under one or over one being overvalued. So for this, it, unlike dividend yield theory where they're inversely correlated, they are just correlated to each other. One being fair value, over one overvalued, under one undervalued. So right now, currently, 0.99. They're slightly, ever so slightly undervalued. I would really call them fair valued because one is the market. See, if you go back to last quarter, this would have been 2020 uh, or last month, they would have been a little overvalued. They were significantly undervalued here a few months ago, 0 0.72, 0 0.74 points. So you could have got them over the last year significantly undervalued. You'll see my position here in a little bit. I am long ally. My cost basis is much lower than they were. I was getting them back in the you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 range, definitely much cheaper than they are currently. 
Uh, let's keep going here. Earnings date sitting April 17th through April 22nd. If you're interested in that, tune back in. Did I cover EPS earnings per share? $2.99. Very nice. Four dividend yield, $1.20. They have current 3.21% dividend yield. My dividend yield is much higher on that. Divide by four because they are a quarterly payer. X dividend date was January 31st. They are, or they did pay out February 15th. So if you were to buy them now, you would be in line for the next dividend. Now, if you look at Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information from, not affiliated, just one of the sources that I go to, and you were to go over here on the left, you'd find statistics. I like to look at dividend yield theory to see if a company is potentially presenting undervalued. To do that, we go to the five-year dividend yield average, 2.97%. We compare it to its current 3.21 or 3.21 over here, forward annual dividend yield. It's the current. It, I know it says forward, but markets are always forward looking. So this is looking at tomorrow before the market opens at 3.21 or where it is currently. And since the dividend yield is higher than their five-year average, that speaks to undervaluation. So dividend yield theory is inversely correlated. That means they're the opposite. If it's higher than their five-year dividend yield average, they're undervalued. If this number was to be lower than their five-year dividend yield average, they would be overvalued. Currently, at 3.21%, according to dividend yield theory, this one is slightly undervalued. Now, this doesn't really present much of a margin of safety. A little bit, at, at least according to dividend yield theory, for me, this one is definitely a hold. You'll see that here in a little bit. Low payout ratio on this one. This is nice. 40.13%. I like 75% or better or, or under. So this is definitely meets the criteria that I am looking for. Again, 75% or under is what I'm looking for unless it's for a REIT, BDC, a limited liability company where they typically pay out 90% or more of their free cash flow. And that's what we're going to look at next, free cash flow. So again, if you were to go over here to the left, you go to Yahoo Finance, you'd see this chart. Over here to the left would be a lot of different... Uh, Places you can click on, financials is one of them. A lot of good information under the financials tab. Uh, you can find their balance sheet, their income statement, their debt to equity ratios. Are they paying down debt? What do their assets look like compared to their liabilities? You want more assets than liabilities. Are, are they paying down debt? Is their revenue growing? Are their margins growing or are they shrinking? A lot of good information there. For our purposes, we're going to look at free cash flow. We want growing free cash flow over time because Typically, if a company has growing free cash flow, they have growing dividends to match. It's also how they pay down debt. They make acquisitions. Uh, they you know, pay out dividends is one of the things they do. So we're going to look at free cash flow here. You can see in 2021, they were negative $1 billion. 2022, pop back up positive $2.7. 2023, down again to $1.9. And they are repurchasing their own share. So overall, I would say from 2021 to date, there is positive free cash flow. Big jump in 2022. Uh, might be an outlier. I'd have to go back. You can go back a little further if you go to a site like uh, stockanalysis.com. We'll see that site here in a minute. Uh, that's another site that I like. You make sure that you're using more than one site and not just blindly uh following the information from one site. Now, I do like that they're repurchasing their own shares here. You can see 4.7 million back here in 2021. 2022, 1.6. They decreased that over time down to 33,000 here. So I do like that. I wish they you know, were back here in these repurchasing numbers, but they're still repurchasing shares, so that's nice to see. We talked about price to book. Looks like they're real close to a one. In my mind, they're, they're fairly valued right now. I would look for more of a pullback on this one. That's just me, though. Now, another source that I like to look at is stockanalysis.com. Again, make sure you're looking at more than one source. Look at any sources that you like. Just don't blindly follow one because sometimes these sources, they don't update their information regularly and you might be looking at something that's old or they might just be wrong, right? So it's a good way to back check the information you're getting is accurate and up to date. They have 15 stock analysts that have taken a look at this. They call it a consensus hold. I would agree with that. Now, if you were to go to this site, stockanalysis.com, you could click on this. This would show you how many people call it a strong sell. How many call it a sell, a hold, a buy, or a strong buy? Out of those 15 analysts, you can see that. Uh, they have a low estimate of $25, which would be a 32.19% decrease from where it currently sits. They have an average estimate of $34.60, which would be a 6.16% decrease. And the only way you'd make any money on this one is if it happened to hit their high of $47. That would be a 27.47% increase in the stock price. All the while, you could collect that 3 plus percent dividend yield. Now, I'd like to get into the statistics here. And look at how financially efficient the company is reinvesting back into itself and looking at return on equity and return on invested capital. I typically like 10% or better. 
Return on equity for Ally is sitting at 6.8%. That's a little lower than I like, but banks typically are. Return on invested capital, 8.26%. Again, under the 10% I'm looking for, but not egregiously so. So comparing this to other banks, which is what you should do, uh, this is not terrible. I don't mind these numbers. Now, EPS growth, I like 5% or better. This is smoking high, 19.96% with forecasted revenue growth of 5.99%. Very nice numbers there overall. The only thing I have a problem with right now is the stock price. Now, as I mentioned, I am long ally. I do have 235.477 shares in my portfolio. My cost basis is $25.58. So this is right up against the low that they estimate it to be. I was buying these a couple years back whenever they really pulled back again. So I am up 44.12%. I actually may set a, a stop loss on this one at about $36. So if it drops below $36 and head back to that $25, dollar range i could lock in this uh, profit and then roll it back into this position later i might not do it with the whole position but i might do it on like 100 135 shares or something because uh, this one does have a tendency to run up then fall back then run back up then fall back it may be on one of those declines that's why the uh that's why if you look at that uh volatility it's so volatile the the beta is above one right that's why now Payout ratio low, 40.27%. This I do not like. This is one of the things I've been watching on this one. That's part of the reason why I might take profits on this and look to roll it into another company just because I want more dividend growth. I've got a few companies now over the last couple of years who have paused their dividend growth, which I don't like. So some of these companies like Ally, I'm watching if they don't raise their dividend you know, in the next few quarters or the next year, I may be looking to swap these positions out for other positions that are raising their dividends. But we'll go back and look in time. January 2021, they were paying 19 cents. They raised it up July 21st or July 30th, 2021 to 25 cents. They raised it up again January 2022 to 30 cents. This was around the time whenever I bought in, but then the rest of January, they didn't raise it up. The rest of 2023, they didn't raise it up. And so far in 2024, they haven't raised it above that 30 cents per share. So they're stuck on that 30 cents per share, have been for a couple of years. Now I did go back in time a little bit further. It does look like they do this from time to time where they pause the dividend yield. So I wasn't as concerned the first year, but now that we're hitting into the second year, hopefully not the third year, if they don't raise it again within the next couple of quarters, I may be looking at uh, transitioning out of this position into another position that has dividend growth. I want dividend growth over time. I like the price per share appreciation. I am up significantly. So I would take this, uh, you know, $2,657 in uh, price appreciation and just roll that into another position so that's what i'm thinking on ally right now i'm a hold i would not be willing to buy this one unless it really dropped back down into this you know 26 and under range and really before it did that i would probably take uh, profits and roll it into another position just because they haven't raised a dividend in a couple years and i don't even though it's my bank you know they are paying me 4.3 percent on my savings so i'll take that four percent versus the uh you know than what they're what they're doing right now because my dividend yield is about 4.6 percent on this one right now too so well that is it for this one let me know what you think of ally bank in the comment section down below as always appreciate you stopping by if you haven't done so already don't forget to show me some love hit that thumbs up ring the notification bell most importantly subscribe to the channel join us on this journey to financial freedom join the vested interest community i do personally read and respond to the comments i'm always interested to read your questions opinions or suggestions for future topics so if you have a company like the uh, like Ally, you'd like me to cover in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it in the comment section down below. And for those of you who have made suggestions, I do have a couple of those on my watch list or on my uh, list of companies to cover. So I'll work those in at some point. Appreciate those suggestions. And this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great week and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. While I'm sharing, sharing my opinion and investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes, investing involves risk and candidate money. You should never invest any amount of comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and the selection criteria, or see the advice counsel certified financial advisor.